The failure of the planned conflagration is to be expected, for there must be a foe in order for that to happen. If indeed there is no armaments to oppose them, what will the dark forces do? There have been such conflicts, but the end result was not something to be repeated. There were self-appointed ones who knew of no other way to oppose distorted energy forces, and this resulted in two wrongs, which did not equate to a right. It is imperative that it be understood that the armed resistance is futile. Those of us charged with assisting in resolving this situation will not support it. Though it has been mentioned before, it seems appropriate to make this point entirely clear. There is an interesting method of resistance employed by workers within industry where they are working in a factory situation in which the owners, managers are oppressive. It's called malicious compliance. It is extremely effective over a period of time. In this instance, the employees do only that which they are told to do. They execute their assigned functions, nothing else. For example, if a machine is breaking down, they do nothing about it. If an item of production is out of place as it moves down the line and will become entangled in any way, they do nothing. It was not their job description. They operate exactly the way they're told. Nothing is done to create a situation. They just allow the process to follow its natural course. Total compliance, no resistance, and the situation deteriorates into chaos by its own momentum. An interesting course to contemplate. Is this turning the other cheek? Not really. It's understanding the process of manifested creation outside of nature. That which comes into being through focus of thought is maintained through continuous focus. It continues as long as it serves its purpose and the focus of positive attention holds it in manifestation. When support for this is withdrawn, it returns to chaos. Management, as in the above example, rarely knows the exact functions and their focus upon manipulating the workers, the customers, and the balance sheet. There are too few holding the focus with positive intent for the manifestation to hold its form. How then is nature different? Nature is creation expressing in harmony with itself. Man did not create nature. Scientists are busy altering nature in your time. Ever bothered to find out how long the hybrid distortions can be held in form? They cannot replicate themselves in perfection. The genes must be recombined and often that does not happen according to past successes does not happen when the intent is in harmony with nature as in producing flowers of greater beauty in different colors. But the intent is to glorify, not to exploit the process of nature. Most often, those who love the plant work within their plant processes to accomplish these successful changes. The point of this discussion is to bring your attention the importance of the intent of the group that desires to cooperate with creation as they focus on the framework of the new paradigm. It is suggested that they consider nature as ideal. This might give them a starting point. How indeed does nature fit into the whole of creation? How could humanity live in harmony with nature rather than attempt to have dominion or power over it? That does not mean that nature should not assist mankind existing on this planet, but it should be a reciprocal relationship. The future would involve cooperating with nature within the laws of the universe. But what are those laws? Where does humanity find those laws that have been hidden from them? In the small amount of time remaining, is there time to study nature and attempt to put together an accurate understanding that could be disseminated quickly enough? You must remember that what you need is available if you ask. Already the law of attraction has been mentioned, but how many laws are there? Less than you may think. The number of applicable laws increases at each dimensional level. For the learning of these laws and the application allows for the evolvement to the next level where there are more to learn and to apply within experience. Let's begin a review of these laws. It's also a review because you have forgotten them in your sojourn in the third dimensional experience. The underlying law of creation is the law of attraction. Simply stated, like attracts like. It does this through the basic tool of creation, thought. I believe your Bible says, as man thinketh, so he is. If you focus on the morass of evil, once you are aware of it, you strengthen it. It is important to be aware of it so that you may withdraw your support of it by using the second law of creation, the law of deliberate intent. Purposely withdrawing your fear and fascination for the evil situation, once you are aware of it, with the deliberative intent of doing so, is using this law. You cannot do this by attempting to stop thinking about it. It is only possible to do this by substituting another thought on a completely different subject. In case of the evil plan, it requires the total inclusion of those involved. 
does not matter what the thoughts are as long as they support the plan. Complicity involves believing the intent of those involved is for the good of all. Perhaps now you can see the power of sympathy for the afflicted ones around your globe. This supports the victim consciousness that is required, for it is complicity in disguise. Do you now consider them victims of war or natural disaster or poverty? You must take a deep breath, accept your part in bringing support to their feelings of victimhood. They too have a responsibility in the creation of these situations. Your sympathy will not solve their misery. Your deliberate choice to create a new paradigm of experience will do that. Withdrawing your focus of attention and bringing it towards creating a new experience will bring the change about far more quickly than repeatedly sending aid while considering them poor innocent victims. Does this sound hard-hearted? From our point of view, it's hard-hearted to be part of the creation of these horrendous situations in the first place. You must deliberately choose to implement your desire to create a whole new experience for them as well as yourselves. When you choose to place your intent beyond the play perceived by the five senses and place it instead in the creation of a new experience, you are withdrawing your consent and supportive experience in which you will no longer wish to participate. You are using the second law of the universe. These are the two laws that apply to this situation. There are yet two more, and these shall be brought to bear within this information as it is appropriate. It is important that we progress within the laws as they are applicable. This is important that you come to realize that the laws of the universe are immutable. They cannot be changed or distorted. They work without question as to who is applying them. When you consider the plan of the evil that surrounds you, you can see them at work. Like attracts like, and intent of purpose brings situations into being. However, we have attempted to bring you to the understanding that there are nuances within the laws that allows for creation to continue. There needs to be an understanding and awareness of the leavening ingredients of the free will following by its proper use. Through this, we have infinite variety within creation and expansive movement results. It is our hope that you will contemplate the implications of this information and it will enlighten in your understanding as well as strengthen your resolve to serve our winning team. When we last had occasion to deal directly with those beyond this plot, it was within conference type situation. At that time they were informed that there were full awareness of what their plan was set to accomplish. They were told that it was a futile attempt, that it was their choice to continue on in their chosen path. Inasmuch as free will is the loose can of the universal plan for evolvement, there was nothing we could do. Now has reached the point as which their plan is indeed a threat. None of could ever attain their desired goal of a negative universe galaxy. It, however, can create unmanageable chaos. Do not take this information lightly. It is indeed a serious situation. This is not of the fault of the inhabitants of Earth. It is just that this was a planet with a consciousness and physical manifest of body type to fit the most ideal criteria for their plan. This is not the first time they tried to overwhelm your planet to use it and the humans for this purpose. It was a long time ago in your sequential accounting. They were far advanced then in their technological gadgetry but did not understand humanity, which allowed them to be repulsed. Unfortunately, humanity chose to use force to do so and in that way buried within their psyche their belief that force was the way to solve any encroachment upon their perceived freedom. In a way, it married you to them through their perception. This time, they believe that the earlier error in understanding their foe will not be repeated. For they've studied you well, every weakness is known, and is being exploited for their purpose. However, their focus was upon inducing your cooperation and resisting them until it was too late for you to do so. They carefully laid plans to overwhelm you both sensually and physically. In particular, they have emphasized safety over adventurous and risk, except within military paradigms. So you have insurance for all risky portions of your regimented life. You have a addicted paycheck system to depend upon along with Social Security. Notice it is always capitalized right along with your reference to God. Even omnipresent Satan clause is capitalized. Your heroes are all well-paid sports or movie stars. How adventurous are these? Your movie star heroes are drugged and adulterous in open display along with your presidential movie star. Remember, if you can be held at the lowest level of your dimension, you cannot take advantage of the dimensional leap of the shift of cycles but can instead be taken to an even lower level of vibration. At that point, it is the intention to separate the soul energy from the body. 
they have no intention of putting it back into another body. See, energy that they plan to use as a power in the transformation of the chaos they intend to cause from positive to negative. They believe that the lower the vibration, the nearer it is to the still point, thus making it more malleable. All of these theories have been reached by attempting to study creation through the process of following its step backward from manifestation to creative impetus. Fortunately, there are many miscalculations in their plan, but not enough to avoid great chaos. Indeed, their plan progresses much further. Here again, we're faced with a great stumbling block of free will, the key ingredient in both bringing the situation into existence and causing it to self-destruct. Magical key is held by the consciousness of the beings on this planet. The consideration of the situation from the above point of view allows for it to be a very bleak future indeed. Enter the view from the other side, that of creation. This view is adventuresome, opportunistic, and positive. It moves not upon a long and exacting plan, but within a fluid and expansive mode. It moves within a creative stance that allows for enhancement of individual and collective experience rather than suppression and destruction. Remember the picture of the pond? The other side must control the ripples from the outside in. We may cause them great problems of containment by using just one small pebble. One idea, continuing thought focused on creation. Here we have two opposite modes of movement within the totality of creation. Now looking at the bigger picture on what side would you place your bet? It's not that our side does not have some problems to resolve. It's just that we have innate natural expansive consciousness that harmonizes with the intended life experience. Even though the conscious awareness appears to be mesmerized into its sleep, how does one bring a hypnotized person back to consciousness? Is it not a snap of the fingers? But must that trigger be previously programmed? Not necessarily. Their planned trigger is its sudden mass realization of overwhelming control, an emotion they plan to feed upon with great enthusiasm. So we have been busy triggering this realization in a slow and steady manner so as not to alert them to damage that's being done by their planned trigger. Remember the hundredth monkey theory? It's a slow and increasing dawning of understanding within the mass consciousness until a critical number reaches an awareness of a new concept and all knows. Guess what? We are disarming their trigger. All of you are aware of the awakening happenings now. You are hoping for sudden realization while we were implementing the opposite. We are planning surprises of our own. It is indeed rewarding or fun, as you put it, to be on the winning side and know it. Now is the time to begin to prepare the step in the process of a new focus for the awakening awareness of your planet inhabitants, a new paradigm of experience. How fast must it move into the fray? Don't sweat it for a moment. Just do your part and all will come into play right on time. Once the first crack in their plan is complete, things will pick up in momentum. Just remember that we are hardly impotent. It's just that we must play the game according to the rules and ensure success. Not so for our opponent. Keep in mind that the Creator must retain all of its fragments, even those that are perceived opponents. He cannot stop caring for any part of the whole of his being. Note that we use the masculine within this information when referring to the Creator. It's just a creating is an attribute of the masculine focus, while the womb or ability to contain the creation of the masculine function is considered the feminine attribute. Through this, we have the depiction of the masculine Creator and the Mother Earth. Indeed, it is the balance and wholeness of experience. We would prefer that the woman of Earth would come into this understanding and find their balance within it soon. May these glimmers of understandings be blessing indeed as you continue to fulfill your commitments within this wondrous event. Keep on keeping on. It is within the scope of the information to bring through the basic framework of the underlying movement of how we may assist you to spearhead the ripples of change that will spread outward through the mass consciousness. Remember that when the pebble is first cast, the first outward ripples would seem quite inconsequential. But in the moments that follow, they move outward in ever-widening circles. This process works when the waters of the pond are still. The mass consciousness is indeed mesmerized into stillness through the mythology employed by the planners of this situation. That does not include ones involved in skirmishes of war, but when the totality of the billions of beings upon the planet is considered, you must remember that there are many who are not reached by the media communications and are unaware of any of this drama. Therefore, the surface of the mass consciousness awareness remains quite still. 
This is the reason that it is imperative that we accomplish our goals to interject our changes within the individual awareness of key individuals now. It is a slow and detectable change of thought patterns within each individual that comes into contact with this knowledge. That is the underlying foundation of our building process. The talk radio programs, as well as the supporting data available on the Internet, are making an impact with additional printed and visual material for those who have yet to understand and process the wake-up information more completely. This format is reaching countless individuals who have this within their conscious and subconscious levels of mind. Their degree of denial on the conscious level does not matter at this moment in the sequence of events. The information is there to be remembered when some item of news or event in their experience will trigger the remembering of it. The Internet reaches around the planet and the mushrooming of interest in available information is a measure of the thirst for this knowledge and is a small indication of what's going on. Please note that had one of the talk show hosts indeed stopped his involvement, there was backup present and already in operation. Volunteers are given opportunity, but backups are standing by not only waiting, but already in position. Ours is not a slapdash, poorly planned operation. Just as the opposition has focused energy to lay their plans in to implement them, this was not unknown to us. In the observation of these, there were plans in readiness so that any possibility to end their endeavor at earlier stages was possible. Indeed, a chess game of great magnitude has been in progress for a very long time in your county. Now we're down to the final moves. The understanding of this basic framework of the plan involves seeing your part in the initiation of this phase as being within the first pebble. To bring change to a mass consciousness involving billions of individual points of awareness by a small group of focused group awareness is indeed a tiny pebble. It is a focused aspect that makes difference, especially when that focus is in harmony with the underlying purpose of the Creator. As that focus encompasses a larger and larger group, the pebble becomes larger and larger. Just because it has reached the surface of the pond of mass consciousness of those inhabitants of the planet, it has not yet reached the level of the surface of the pond of awareness of the planet herself. The level of awareness of Earth consciousness is a whole new ballgame, which has never been explored by the humanity in this sojourn you refer to as a current wave of planetary civilization. It was known and understood at what might be called priestly levels long ago, but the information was not disseminated, just that there are what you call beings of awareness who have transcended the third dimensional experience and who are devoted to the task of assisting you in this process, so also are their focus of awareness that serve in that purpose at the planetary level. Those are fully aware of this situation and have not yet brought their influence to bear. What you perceive as influences involving Earth herself are as yet just normal reactions to distorted patterns brought forth by the extreme misuse of your home base. If the action within mass consciousness does not bring upon the desired changes, then a pebble of different origin will ripple through that conscious pond, and indeed there shall be a movement on that level which shall not be kind to the inhabitants. Unfortunately, that level of awareness is oblivious to individual humans, and so all shall experience and survive, or not, those events by their own intuition as to placement and movements within the events as they occur. It is still possible to bring upon the reversal of a planned misuse of the inhabitants and the planet without that level of involvement. As you can see by following the messages, there are multiple levels of involvement in this situation and we have been barely scratching the surface. It's not planned to overwhelm you with information, but only to bring forth that which it will serve your understanding that you are not abandoned, but are supported fully so that the opportunity to transcend through the cycles may be fully available. It's not necessary that all of humanity be given this information in order for them to participate at this moment in your timing. Most would not even consider it. It is for those that are open to it and find comfort in knowing that their efforts are acknowledged and supported. Most have moved on with their assignments without knowing why or how to accomplish them, but have taken advantage of the opportunity and kept going because there was a knowingness that it was what they had to do. That is courage indeed, which does not go unrecognized in the final accounting of this endeavor. Blessed to all that read and consider this information, for it is given in the focus of love within that which is the source of the opportunity through experience.
Now that we are beginning to reach a level of understanding of the basic format that is the foundation for your cooperative focus within the larger view, it is possible to expand into more levels of information. These are not at the physical activity level, but in the more important area of using creative thought. Inasmuch as you are a focused fragment of the Creator's awareness, it is now time for you to begin to fulfill your purpose of expanding the use of the holographic concept that has been the vehicle of your trip into the third dimensional experience. This is not a process intended to overwhelm or cause resistance within your awareness. These concepts are known to you at a deeper level. It will seem quite familiar provided you relax and follow the wording. These will begin to stir the inner remembrance process. It is within your understanding that a fragment of a whole can through the holographic process depict the whole. It is through the projection of light through the fragment that the illusion of the whole from which it came is reproduced so that the nature of the whole can be known. If this is the case, then you are a picture of the whole from which you were projected. If this is true, then how can there be a diversity in what is seen all around you? Shouldn't this be a world of exact replicas? If the source of the replicated whole were limited to one focus of experience, then that would be true. However, if the whole of that source is multidimensional and within its makeup holds potentiality of multiple focus of purpose, then the projected fragment draws upon the unlimited fields of possibilities. Thought provides the mobility that allows creation to flow into manifestation. Thought has the potential of thinking within and upon itself. This is another way of describing free will. Thus, these added levels of activity enable endless variety to be present. Now, if that is true, why isn't every fragment totally different? You were created in the image and similitude of that which projected you into existence. Here, the law of attraction is similar yet different is seen at work. If that was absent, then there should be no exchange of thought and creation would be just an unending field of unrelated diversity. Enter what you call intelligence, which is nothing more than thought thinking within itself and observing itself observe itself, a spiraling activity. Focused thought thinks itself outward into manifestation. This is the slowing of the vibratory rate of the extended thought to the lowest level at which it contains its purposeful intent. At that point, the manifested thought can no longer perceive its source. It is in a state of thinking awareness that now can perceive itself and its surrounding environment. In your vernacular, it can no longer clearly remember the nature of its source, so it has forgotten. Since it is projected thought, it must maintain its connection in order to remain in manifestation. Through this connection lies the potentiality of the fragment focusing on its own thought, processes purposely back to this connective energy flow, and then beginning to remember what it is, which again is thought thinking within and upon itself. Since the holographic projection is an extension process of the outward movement of thought, the natural inclination is to continue the outward movement through the use, in this scenario, of its sensory tools to think and observe. Indeed, we could go on for volumes of books to cover the beginning story of this planet and its history of its inhabitants, but that would take us far afield from the purpose of this message. The point is to help you realize that thought thinking within and upon itself is commonly experienced by you because it is exactly what you are. Through the choice you create diverse experiences, through thinking and choosing. Each experiences commonly shared situations differently. This is the natural flow of creation within itself. This sounds idealistic when the current situation surrounding you is considered. When multiple human beings, the extension of thought from higher dimensions, focus, experience interactions, combined thought patterns evolve. These thought patterns in movement are something like your breathing process. They expand to a certain point, and then they relax and contract by returning first to a restive state. Involved within this process, you experience positive and negative polarities, or so you have named them. It is a slow, spiraling process, just as your breathing process was intended to assist you in the slow, spiraling process. If these are the parameters of experience, then you can begin to perceive that the contraction relaxation phase of the process in this moment of planetary experience is not a normal one. It is very distorted indeed. Your intended freedom of thought choice process have been violated. It is layers of thought distortion experiencing contraction that has bypassed the restive point. 
that normally allows for the return to the expensive mode. Hopefully, you can now overlay this understanding upon the planetary experience. If so, you see that in order for the distorted plan to accomplish their moments of beginning, following use of planned chaos, which is to be their field of opportunity to cause a change of polarity, they must allow the restive point to be reached. Their idea is to attain this by overwhelming the greater part of the conscious awareness of this planet through a majority of its inhabitants. This is teamed with the ending or shifting of a major creative cycle in this galaxy. There exists within their timing and their mythology their greatest weakness. For the contraction of the awareness beyond the universal norm, when placed in momentary rest point, sets up the opportunity for a reactive expansion of major proportions. Carefully placed triggers within the same contracted awareness can ensure this expansion. Welcome to the winning side. Focus and manifest, indeed. It is now appropriate through the shift of greater understanding within the key group of visionaries to begin the focus of the conception of the new paradigm of experience. As in the pattern, many will receive this cosmic stimulation, and the perfect few will respond when the opportunity to participate is presented. Keep in mind that this continuing process will move through phases of birthing within the awareness individually and collectively in the subtle, calm, transcending movement. Do not expect a massive jumping on the bandwagon type of reaction. It will move outward in a whisper of awareness. Again, think in terms of the patterns of nature. When you observe nature, you will see spirals in the slow process of growth as a spiral of shell formation within the functioning of breathing. Though invisible in form, it is the process that begins at birth and carries each mammalian form through its sequential life. Consider the birthing process through the format of breathing, expansion, and contraction, causing movement toward the goal within a transcending spiral and carrying it to completion. You will see a traveling outward of the conceptual information, an in-breath of consideration, again a traveling outward, and an in-breath of shared discussion, moving toward the desired focus of a new experience. The intent fueled by the desire for the new experience will bring forth the process which is being built upon the foundation of focus provided by multiple levels of awareness, with supporting intent for this situation to move into a new paradigm. This is the appropriate moment to consider a self-defeating concept that needs to be corrected to ensure success. Through long planned in misinformation by the religions on your planet, you think of the focus assistance as coming to you from the outside. You look outward at the surrounding lights in your sky at night and presume it is coming from out there. Indeed, it is possible to exchange energies at the level of manifestation. However, the flow of creation is from the inside out. It is an expansive process. And again, we must remind you of the in and out flow of the breathing process. What your scientists observe as a burnout and destruction through black holes, etc., is instead evidence of the breathing process incorporating the spiral changes of shifts into higher vibratory dimensions. As this happens, appropriate energy fields move through the process. If all was energy, then what is observed would long ago have been devoured by one single black hole. Here again, you have begun to understand the magnitude of the plans of the negative focus in attempting to create through the process of pushing this galaxy through a process opposite the creative flow into an opposing reality. What is perceived by the scientists as a compaction of energy into a tiny ball of massive molecular weight is, of course, total nonsense. The energy is expanding within the conversion process by increasing its vibrational levels as it moves into a new paradigm of expression. Is this galaxy or a small portion of it going through the black hole process? There is no awareness of it. What if it was true? If it was to happen, it would hardly be a hellacious experience. Let us return to the point. To say that our plan is in motion does not mean that the conscious contacts with seemingly appropriate beings of shared purpose and dedication are near completion. It is this process of conception that is the focus of these lessons. That which is to be accomplished at more subtle levels depends upon this process proceeding within defined parameters. The outflow of this information to those of commitment is encouraged. It is most meaningful in the whole of it, but each can stand alone as is appropriate. Key words to trip the intercept triggers have been for the most part avoided and the references beings and processes of interest are made as subtly as possible. 
It is time that the usage of those be virtually eliminated as our focus of intent is on information that educates and informs you of the true nature of yourselves and the energetic forms and functions of the creation of which you are an integral part. Let us make a point clear. This focus of information is not God speaking directly to you. That which you call by that name is confused and misunderstood scramble of information. What has happened is that what could be personified into the creator of this galaxy is not the focus of the whole of all there is. To make this understandable, perhaps, let us return again to the breathing process as an example. The underlining all that is is pure potentiality and even finer levels beyond that which are imperceptible because to perceive would be to limit it. At its conceptual level, breathing is an expansion as you breathe out. Rest, in breathe, rest and repeat. Potentiality is most available for absorption, big generalization, in the moments of rest. Throughout the entirety of the expression of potentiality into experience are varying degrees of awareness that have begun the return trips by first realizing they are holographic tiny fragments of the focus of their creator. This creative focus is in turn a tiny fragment of finer, more encompassing focus of the potentiality that underlines a greater creation that has at some point been birthed from that which lies beyond in an unknowable state. Will we return to that state of unknowingness? Is that our goal at the farthermost reaches of eternity? Doubt it, for it appears that in order to move through the return trip, just exactly the opposite is necessary in order to progress. You must remember that one of your greatest distortions in understanding creation at this level is your concept of needing to measure experience as linear in what you call time. It's also a great barrier for those of us who are too interested in the experience to bother to measure it. We can conceive of no reason to do so, for we know divine order has no sequential parameters. As we return our discussion of your concept of God, you can now see why we have substituted the word creation and creator instead of using God, in the hope that we could begin to change your perception. The word God itself conjures up feelings that cause inner turmoil in many since at a deeper level they know that the religious teachings through a long sequence of experience have brought them only confusion. These have given them a distorted representation of the source of their origin. It is important that those who intend to bring forth a new paradigm have at least a basic clarity as to the nature of their identity and the source of their existence. What lies beyond this galaxy is at this moment outside the necessity to understand. To know that it is, is all that is necessary. Our focus lies within the creation of our Creator. He, Andronjidis, but in the masculine creative mode, can be called God. But frankly, a new name is recommended. You may address communications to Him, but it is only received when it harmonizes with the creative outflow of His expression. In His name, as an expression in your Bible was meant to tell you to place your focus of prayer within that purposeful intention. You are to make a request that intends creation within the harmony of his attitude of all that is necessary to bring what you desire is available for your use. You are a fragment of him, and through you, he, the I am awareness of your connection, is experiencing the expansion of the total awareness that you are he. As you do this, it is a shared experience. As a fragment of him, you create by attraction of all your experiences. By using the law of intention in harmonious cooperation, within his expansive mode is how you create purposeful or new paradigms of the experience. It is hoped this information is a blessing to the expansion of your understanding of who and what you are. Yours is a glorious heritage. Celebrate. When your perception of time is adjusted to include the possibility of giving up, as unimportant. The necessity of measuring experience in blocks, rather than allowing it to simply flow through your experience, you will have surpassed a great impediment to your progress. Earlier in the existence of your planet, there was not a tilt in the axis, and so the seasons, as you know, did not exist. This confined plant and animal existence to the more moderate temperate zones. But the growth was more prolific and extended further into the colder areas than you might think because of the adaptation. The effect of the tilt causing you to have the seasons as one more block of experience to measure as of time. 
A continuum of days and nights within an unchanging overall weather pattern brings a more relaxed focus on the necessity to measure time within survival experience. Before the distortion of the energy of competition, cooperation was one key to existence. When the lifestyles of what you refer to as the indigenous tribes in the equatorial latitudes of your planet are considered, there is much less emphasis on measuring blocks of time and more cooperation within the survival groups. There is less competition between groups that is depicted in your movies, excluding areas like Africa because of land outside influences. These are considerations to be included within the new paradigm. The greater the unbalance of the planetary inhabitants, the greater imbalance of the planet as a whole. Within the changing of the galactic cycles lies the opportunity for rebalancing both the inhabitants and the planet. This does not mean that the planet would necessarily move 23 degrees back to perfect balance, but indeed some change could be made. It is interesting to note that there is a move among you what you refer to as liberal political views towards the elimination of competition within the educational experiences of your children, and it is met with stiff resistance. Of course, there are ulterior motives for this would further calm the children into less and less creative modes of experience. Athletic competitions bring forth desires to excel, and the concept transfers over into desire to excel in other areas. This has been a larger stumbling block for their plans than what is anticipated. As an interesting side note, the greatest improvements in lifestyle, art, and genuine music happen during lengthy periods of peace when there is no competition within warring conflicts. The history of China has long periods of freedom from being overrun by other cultural groups and little intermarriage with outside groups. Unfortunately, overpopulation was a counterbalance and these improvements were not widely available to all the citizens. Nonetheless, the focus was turned inward towards contemplation and desire for greater experience of uplifting and more joyful existence. Much was accomplished during these periods. The new paradigm must include within it the desire to lift the human experience above the pivotal thought and behavior patterns that force distortions to be repeated generation after generation. The desire to do this is apparent in the myriad of self-help books, tapes, and well-trodden paths to the psychologist and the psychiatrist offices. The approach is from the outside inward by considering the action and attempting to find the buried experience that has caused the reactive habits. Here again, envisioning a new paradigm and focusing on experiencing this instead of fixing the old would empower the desired new realm of existence. However, even if accomplished, the ability to maintain a different level of experiencing within the surrounding environment would be difficult indeed. As more than one crab in a basket would not allow any to escape from the basket, so it is with the human experience. The new paradigm must be a cooperative group focus of desire within and clearly stated purpose that can be held in focus for a period long enough to bring it into manifestation. You can now understand what the focus group must accomplish is to create clearly stated purpose that is appealing to all of humanity, attaches the apology of an essay written in 1899, long before instant communication. It chronicles what happens when it was published in a small and consequential magazine. It was called A Message to Garcia. If this one inspirational message could travel the globe, then think what effect one encompassing message of purpose could do within our goal. Through the focus of getting this information out about the existence of the evil planners and of their deeds as far as you have been able to discover them is indeed the necessary first step. It's not rally the reactive response. It's just as well for, as we have said before, the victim martyrdom, which might have engendered, are not part of the true paradigm of experience within the creative flow. What is needed is a pivot point that can be accomplished before closing of cycles. It need not be accomplished in a simultaneous moment. It is, at best, an event within each individual's conscious awareness. That process does not make it less of a pivot point. It would lay the groundwork for the greater pivotal changes in conscious awareness that will happen within sequential experience. Again, we remind you that free will allows those who choose to remain in the pattern of present existence. Do not be concerned with those. The ingredient of free will in the soup of experience teaches us another universal laws, that is of allowance. Personal responsibility is just that, personal. 
It means that one is concerned with the choosing of his or her own experiences and is not responsible for the experience of others. All are allowed to participate within a group focus of cooperative experience or not. However, choosing not to participate does have its consequences. Those who choose deliberately to withhold their participation in ending the present paradigm will be allowed to continue it elsewhere in somewhat different format. They are allowed to choose their mode of experience in this situation. Allowance is the most difficult of the laws to be learned at the third dimensional level because of the deeply ingrained need to control. Control is transcended to the practice of the law of allowance. At this point in this discussion, we encounter the situation of child abuse. Children are within the influences of their parents' belief systems. What the parents believe and focus upon draws experiences to the family group. Information of past family history is encoded within the combination of genes, which accounts for events happening to some members of the family and not to others. It emphasizes the fact that parenting involves more than dealing with planned or unplanned children. It is a personal responsibility of each parent and both parents together to raise the children within an understanding of the wide scope of influences such as undertaking involves. It is important at this point to discuss the capitalization of various words in this text. It is intended that this material be as free of the religious connotations as possible. Current and past experiences with priestly manipulation and control caused immediate shutdown or distortion of understanding information that contains these references because of the misinformation about the control of what you call God. We can assure you that the Creator could care less if you honor Him by capitalizing all references to Him. He is much more interested in whether or not you harmonize with the outflow of His creative focus. There is a problem because the very words you choose to indicate awareness of this flow of energy engender reactive feelings. This cannot be helped. So it is best to at least do away with all the capitals. It is one trigger that is best left inactive. It is our intent that this continuing discussion brings a deeper understanding with regard to the purpose that looms in your immediate future. It is hoped that it strengthens and supports your commitment to continue on your progress along the paths of completion of this segment of experience. However, don't plan on a long R&R &R leaves at its ending. A Message to Garcia by Albert Hubbard this literary trifle, A Message to Garcia, was written one evening after supper, in a single hour. It was on the 22nd of February, 1899, Washington's birthday, and we were just going to press with the March Philistine. The thing leapt hot from my heart, written after a trying day, when I had been endeavoring to train some rather delinquent villagers to abjure the comatose state and get radioactive. The immediate suggestion, though, came from a little argument over the teacups when my boy Bert suggested that Rowan was a real hero of the Cuban War. Rowan had gone alone and done the thing, carried the message to Garcia. It came to me like a flash. Yes, the boy's right. The hero is the man who does his work, who carries a message to Garcia. I got up from the table and wrote a message to Garcia. I thought so little of it that we ran it in the magazine without a heading. The edition went out, and soon orders began to come for extra copies of the March Philistine, a dozen, fifty, a hundred. And when the American News Company ordered a thousand, I asked one of my helpers which article it was that had stirred up the cosmic dust. It's the stuff about Garcia, he said. The next day, a telegram came from George Daniels of the New York Central Railroad. Thus, give me a price on 100,000 Rowan articles in a pamphlet form. Empire State Express advertisement on the back. Also, how soon can we ship? I replied, given price, and we stated we could supply the pamphlets in two years. Our facilities were small, and a 100,000 booklets looked like an awful undertaking. The result was that I gave Mr. Daniels permission to reprint the article in his own way. He issued it in booklet form in editions of a half a million. Two or three of these half million lots were sent out by Mr. Daniels. In addition, the article was reprinted in over 200 magazines and newspapers. It has been translated into all written languages. At the time Mr. Daniels was distributing the message to Garcia, Prince Hylakov, director of the Russian Railroad, was in this country. He was a guest of the New York Central and made a tour of the country under the personal direction of Mr. Daniels. 
The prince saw the little book and was interested in it, more because Mr. Daniels was putting it out in such big numbers, probably, than otherwise. In any event, when he got home, he had the matter translated into Russian and a copy of the book had given to every railroad employee in Russia. Other countries then took it up, and from Russia it passed into Germany, France, Spain, Turkey, Hindustan, and China. During the war between Russia and Japan, every Russian soldier who went from the front was given a copy of the message to Garcia. The Japanese, finding the booklets in possession, the Russian prisoners concluded that it must be a good thing, and accordingly translated into Japanese. And an order of the Mikado, a copy was given to every man in the employ of the Japanese government, soldier or civilian. Over 40 million copies of a message to Garcia have been printed. This is said to be a larger circulation than any other literary venture of the author in all history, thanks to a series of lucky accidents. Signed, December 1st, 1913. A message to Garcia. In all of this Cuban business, there is one man that stands out on the horizon of my memory like Mars at Peripherian. When war broke out between Spain and the United States, it was necessary to communicate quickly with the leader of the insurgents. Garcia was somewhere in the mountain fastness of Cuba. No one knew where. No mail or telegraph message could reach him. The president must secure his cooperation and quickly what to do. Someone said of the president, there's a fellow by the name of Rowan. We'll find Garcia for you, if anybody can. Rowan was sent for and given a letter to be delivered to Garcia. How the fellow by the name of Rowan took the letters, sealed it up in an oil skin pouch, wrapped it over his heart, in four days landed by night off the coast of Cuba from an open boat, disappeared into the jungle and in three weeks, came out on the other side of the island, having traversed a hostile country on foot and delivered his letter to Garcia, are things I have no special desire now to tell in detail. The point that I wish to make is this. McKinley gave Rowan a letter to be delivered to Garcia. Rowan took the letter and did not ask, where is he at? By the eternal, there is a man whose form should be cast in deathless bronze, and the statue placed in every college of the land. It's not book learning young men need, nor instructions about this and that, but a stiffening of the vertebrae which will cause them to be loyal to a trust, to act promptly, concentrate their energies, do the thing, carry a message to Garcia. General Garcia is dead now, but there are other Garcias. No man who has endeavored to carry out an enterprise where many hands were needed, but has been well nigh appalled at times by the imbecility of the average man, the inability or unwillingness to concentrate on a thing and do it. Slipshod assistance, foolish inattention, dowdy indifference, and half-hearted work seems the rule, and no man succeeds, unless by hook or crook or threat he forces or bribes other men to assist him, or mayhap. God, in his goodness, performs a miracle and sends him an angel of light for assistance. You, reader, put this matter to a test. You are sitting now in your office. Six clerks are within call. Summon anyone and make this request. Please look in the encyclopedia and make a brief memorandum for me concerning the life of Coriego. Will the clerk quietly say yes, sir, and go do his task? On your life, he will not. He will look at you out of a fishy eye and ask one more of the following questions. Who was he? Which encyclopedia? Was I hired for that? Don't you mean Bismarck? What's the matter with Charlie doing it? Is he dead? Is there any hurry? Can I bring you the book and let you look it up yourself? What do you want to know for? And I will lay you ten to one that after you've answered the questions and explained how to find the information and why you want it, the clerk will go off and get one of the other clerks to help him try to find Garcia, and then come back and tell you there's no such man. Of course, I may lose my bet, but according to the law of average, I will not. Now, if you're wise, you will not bother to explain your assistant that Coriego is indexed under the C's, not in the K's, but you will smile very sweetly and say, never mind, and go look it up yourself. And this incapacity for independent action, this oral stupidity, this infirmity of the will, this unwillingness to cheerfully catch hold and lift, these are the things that put pure socialism so far into the future. If men will not act for themselves, what will they do when the benefits of their effort is for all? A first mate with knotted club seems necessary, and the dread of getting the bounce Saturday night holds many a worker to his place. 
advertise for a stenographer, and 9 out of 10 who apply can neither spell nor punctuate and do not think it is necessary to. Can such a one write a letter to Garcia? You see that bookkeeper, said the foreman to me in the large factory. Yes, what about him? Well, he's a fine accountant, but if I'd sent him uptown on an errand, he might accomplish the errand. On the other hand, might stop at four saloons on the way, and when he got to Main Street would forget what he had been sent for. Can such a man be entrusted to carry a message to Garcia? We have recently been hearing much Malden sympathy expressed for the downtrodden denizens of the sweatshop and the homeless wanderers searching for honest employment, and with it all often go many hard words for the men in power. Nothing is said about the employer who goes old before his time in a vain attempt to get frowsy near to well to do intelligent work, and his long patient striving after help that does nothing but loaf when his back is turned. In every store and factory, there's a constant weeding out process going on. The employer is constantly sending away help that has shown their incapacity to further the interests of the business, and others are being taken on. No matter how good times are, this sorting continues. Only if times are hard and work is scarce, the sorting is done finer. But out and forever, out the incompetent and unworthy go. It is the survival of the fittest. Self-interest prompts every employer to keep the best of those who can carry a message to Garcia. I know one man of really brilliant parts who has not the ability to manage a business of his own, and yet who is absolutely worthless to anyone else because he carries with him constantly the insane suspicion that his employer is oppressing or intending to oppress him. He cannot give orders, and he will not receive them. Should a message be given to him to take to Garcia? His answer would probably be, take it yourself. Tonight this man walks the streets looking for work, the wind whistling through his threadbare coat. No one who knows him dare employ him, for he is regular firebrand of discontent. He is impervious to reason, and the only thing that can impress him is the toe of a thick-soled number nine boot. Of course I know that no one so morally deformed is no less to be pitied than a physical cripple. But in our pitying, let us drop a tear too for the men who are striving to carry on great enterprise, whose working hours are not limited by whistle, and whose hair is fast turning white to the struggle to hold in line dowdy indifference, slipshod imbecility and the heartless ingratitude which, but for their enterprise, would be both hungry and homeless. Have I put the matter too strongly? Possibly I have. But when all the world has gone a-slumming, I wish to speak a word of sympathy for the man who succeeds, the man who, against great odds, has directed the efforts of others, and having succeeded, finds there's nothing in it, nothing but bare board and clothes. I have carried a dinner pail and worked for a day's wages and I've also been an employer of labor, and I know there is something to be said on both sides. There is no excellence, per se, in poverty. Rags are no recommendation, and all employers are not rapacious and high-handed, any more than all poor men are virtuous. My heart goes out to the man who does his work when the boss is away, as well as when he is at home. And the man who, when given a letter for Garcia, quietly takes the missive without asking idiotic questions and with no lurking intention of checking into the nearest sewer or doing aught else but deliver it. Never gets laid off nor has to go on strike for higher wages. Civilization is one long, anxious search for such individuals. Anything such a man asks shall be granted. He is wanted in every city, town, and village, in every office, shop, store, and factory. The world cries out for such. He is needed, and needed badly, the man who can carry a message to Garcia. As your need to experience in calculated time passes into relative unimportance, the momentum of your experiences of the new paradigm will flow smoothly into a release of the materialistic mode that holds you tightly within the powers of the deviant perpetrators. It is the pursuit of the creation of your personal fiefdoms and the competition to create one of the greater opulence and grander physical pleasures that you have been trapped. These are the empty promises to fill the void of imbalance that you feel within. Subliminal messages are planned within all the advertisements to feed your materialistic addictions. The tangled and layered morass of information and lies is reminiscent of the fable of the lion and the mouse. The lion of humanity lies staked to the earth held fast by the net of distraction of the conscious mind. 
In the story, it took a tiny mouse to chew through the ropes to release a lion. In our version of the story, it's a radio talk show, the available internet information, and the publication of books and tapes that constitute the mouse. The information shared is based on personal experience and researches of archives of information available to any that care to take advantage of it. The integrity of the net is threatening to give way. Once released, the lion is then unaware of the power of this tiny mouse so anything could happen. Unfortunately, there are more nets in place unless we take charge of the storyline and change the scenario. The point of these messages is to encourage and to inform, not educate in the format as it is practiced. There are no subliminal subversive intentions hidden within them. Each of you has programmed within the deep levels of your awareness the memory of the purpose you came into this lifetime to accomplish. We are simply keeping our agreement to remind you and to give you guidance and direction to your actions. When the focus is on reacting to what is perceived as imminent danger, then momentum is lost. It is our agreed function to share the view that we are privileged to have from a dimensional encompassing a greater vision of the situation. We view energy patterns in movement and holographic display, and we can model the various possibilities available. This is an advantage. It is the purpose of this information to share what is allowed within the universal laws governing free will with as much clarity as possible. We find allegorical stories are remembered and applied to overall understanding most effectively. We are limited to those available through the experiences of the translator of this information. It is the dictation, translation, transcription process, with the translation portion being the most critical component. It is important that this person continue to input information to enhance the available database. Guidance is provided to appropriate materials. It is within the allowable guidelines to bring to your attention deviations within these patterns that can be corrected because it is your free will decision whether or not to do so. The problem of getting information to you is massive indeed. Face-to-face -face discussions are not possible for many reasons, but mostly because the victim martyred them is not in our experience pattern and that would be the end result. Therefore, we have at this process a more effective way, though there is no two-way exchange possible at this time and it's not necessary. It's also possible for us to bring much information into the awareness of those committed to the project. Through the acceptance of the commission and commitment to participate and see it through, the energy matrix of each changes, and this is observed. This opens a line of communication and also results in a chain of activity within the inner dimensional sleep states. These changes are reflected in the outer dimensional activities during the day. Many changes in these lives will be noted from the mundane to major shifts in attitudes and choice of activities. As mental and physical activities change, the intent and commitment becomes more focused and a spiral effect begins to occur within the levels of consciousness. You are supported in this process. It is with trepidation that we bring to your attention that the open communication lines are now under greater control and it is their intention to identify those yet unknown individuals who disseminate information that counters their plans. As yet, it is in the identification process and has not moved beyond its retribution. This is because there are purposes for allowing you the privilege to do what you are doing that are not known to all levels of oppression. The word identification process is being further expanded. We suggest strongly that you edit your verbal and written conversations. Book wording can be read electronically, but titles especially are being processed. If suspicious, then the forward epilogue portions are to be reviewed. Expect bookstore chains to be contacted and told to remove titles from the shelves and rage to take place at wholesale or distributor levels as the next step. Hopefully they will be discriminating and take only certain individual items, however that has not been the pattern. This will limit your freedom to print and distribute freely, so creativity must be used in the wording of titles, forwards and endorsement information. It suggests the possibility of setting up alternative locations and different names with books likely to pass through the first two tests. This might be considered as possible joint efforts if the hurdle of profit sharing can be worked through. If reprints are being considered or new books or tapes, these considerations may be important. Creativity and promotional copy will be challenging. Intuitive inspiration is available upon request. Smile. You're on the winning side.